This clip is sponsored by Med Travelers. If you're an SLP interested in travel therapy, visit medtravelers.com to get started. What is compassionate communication? So, I mean, we know what both of those words mean, but how do you define that? Yes. So from all of the practice, and I like how you said, how do I define it? Because I do want to point out that I am sharing my interpretations, my best interpretations mm -hmm. that I have of the nonviolent communication strategies. If you want to learn more, you can go to cnvc.org. It's the Center for Nonviolent Communication. But my interpretation of compassionate communication is really being able to give feedback and receive feedback. So listen and speak in a way that comes from the heart, in a way that you are connecting to your conscious intentions, and in a way that aligns with your values. So thinking about what your value system is. So, so Jennifer, what I mean, what are some of your top values that you prioritize in life? Let's say integrity. Um, I kindness. Um, you know, that compassion. Um, realizing that that everybody comes with their own story and not you know assuming good intent. I would say are some of my main ones. Okay. And those are great ones. Kindness, compassion, and, and so integrity. So you want to make sure, Jennifer, when you are talking to others and you're speaking to others that you're connecting to, that's my value system. So I want to make sure that I am intentionally, when I'm speaking to you, I'm using kindness. I'm intentionally using compassion. I'm, so you, I'm intentionally, um, being truthful about my word or having integrity in my communications with you. Because what happens a lot of times is when we're not using compassionate communication. So the contrast to that is what Dr. Marshall Rosenberg calls life alienating communication. So when we're using that life alienating communication, we are disconnected from our intentions and our values. And we might communicate in a way that has blame or judgment or criticism or demands or labeling or diagnosing people, mm -hmm. not diagnosing in the way you're thinking as an SLP would diagnose, but just yes. making a judgment yes. on people. And what happens is maybe after the conversation is over, your needs are still not met. Maybe their needs are still not met. You don't feel like you got any further in the conversation. It created even more of a disconnect, you know, this, this separation, which is the mm -hmm. opposite of collaboration and what's important in our field to, to really be successful with the people that we're working with. So you have that life alienating communication and then you walk away and we all do this. I still do this. And we walk away and we think, oh man, why did I say that? That's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I believe in. I was just, I was just in a moment. I had so much on my plate. I just, you caught me at the wrong time. I reacted. I'm sorry. Right. It sounds familiar because it's human. It's normal. And we all do it. But compassionate communication brings us back to being able, I want to hear when Jennifer talks to me, when you talk to me, I want to drop beneath the words that you are using. And I want to connect you on a deeper level of maybe what you're feeling, what you're needing, and how I can support you rather than going into a place of defensiveness or reactivity, or maybe even closing my ears off and not hearing you or already be thinking about what I want to say next without even having heard what you shared. 